Well, hello, my friends. I'm so excited to be here with David O'Connor, the Chief of Sport for the U.S. Equestrian. Um, we're here to talk about the FEI World Cup Finals. David, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. We're looking forward to coming out here in another two weeks. Yeah. So like you said, yeah, before we hit record, you you are in Kentucky right now. And um, uh, correct? Yes. And, right. And our, yeah. The, uh, our U.S. Federation, who is the one who does all the sports for Olympic sports um, and our national sports, um, all are based here at Kentucky Horse Park um, in Lexington, Kentucky, you know, horse capital of the world, yeah. um, as, they, as yes. they like to say here in Lexington. Um, so, yeah, so the, the park, uh, the Federation has been here for uh, almost 20, 22 years, I guess. So um, that's where our offices are. And that's what we do here. Yeah, well, let OK, so tell us a little bit about, about, about the FEA World Cup, the finals that are and they're coming here to um, Omaha, Nebraska. And how important is this event to to what you do? Yeah, there's no question in the show jumping into two different this of uh, the two different disciplines. It's really huge between dressage and show jumping that this is the close really historically of what the indoor season was. So in Europe, the indoor season, uh, everything, you know, from October to right now, you know, in April time, um, it becomes the close of that of that season, both in dressage and, and in show jumping. And so really come down to even though the U.S. qualifies a little bit different because we don't really have an indoor season here. Right. Um, you get the best of the best year. That's the cool thing. It's like everybody in those different sports know that they want to have the World Cup, to be a, cup, a World Cup champion and in, in that series leader <clears throat> that at the end, you want to have that on your resume, <laughs> right? right? Yes, you want to, you're going to go to the Olympic Games, you're going to go to the World Championships and you want to have those on your resume. This is one of those things that you want to have on your resume. So you get the best of the best horses here and riders here um, for very intense uh and uh very exciting competition that's right in front of you right so okay so you're a former former olympian talk about that yeah i got to compete in uh, two olympic games in uh rode two times each so i rode four times in the olympic games in A A atlanta and then went down to sydney also um and um so I, you know i had a great career re representing the united states over 25 years of Wow. Uh, these things in my sport or my sports eventing which is like a triathlon side um so we don't have we don't do the we, we're not in the world cup series because our sport's a little bit different it's much sure. more of an outdoor sport and uh but i was lucky enough to represent the united states for a long time and um had a successful career and you know then you step into other roles of coaching and administrative to really make sure that or give the opportunities for the younger generations to have the same opportunity that I had, which is, you know, which was wonderful from a competitive point of view. We really enjoyed it. Yeah. And I, I know, so you're talking about like, like two different sports in, in general, but how, how have things changed? Like when you first started um, just in the world of. Well, I, I think the growth of the interest in the sport has changed so much, you know, with um, really, I think coming down from, uh, social media side, the media side yeah. of people being able to participate a as a spectator now um, is really changed in the last, you know, 30 years or I'm old now, so I probably shouldn't yeah. talk too much about the age, but um, well, I am too, I know, am too so, go <laughs> so, you know, but literally this, uh, when I started when I was 18, you know, the, the spectator side was not a huge side of equestrian sports. Yeah. And now it's huge. I mean, here we have a five star here at Kentucky, you know, in another month that we'll get 35,000 people out here. This World Cup here in Omaha will be packed every night. Um, yeah. So 12 or 15,000 people watching this in that stadium watching this. Um, and it's electric when you feel like that. So I think one of the things that's changed is it become instead of just a horse show or a horse event, this is now a sporting event. And it feels like a sporting event, just like tennis or just like the other sports. And so that's the big change that I have seen in the last 30 years. OK, and that I mean, again, I think I I always find it just so fascinating to see how things have evolved. And like you said, also with the um, the interest and it is a sporting event and, and thousands and thousands and thousands of people are going to be out here in Omaha, Nebraska, watching yeah. watching this event. So. Um, just really cool. All right. So 
let's talk a little bit about, um, as I'm looking at my notes, um, Omaha is a host city. Um, yeah. What do you think about that? Talk I about think it's that. I mean, it's great because it's so much, just even those last years, maybe Chicago had a huge influence of equestrian sport. Um, and obviously down in Texas, you know, from the Western sports and you're that, that side of the question, but have the middle of the country uh, really, you know, have this level of competition and show the interest. I mean, people from all over the world are going to be coming here and from uh, certainly coming from all over the country, the East Coast, West Coast side is it's fantastic to have something like this in the middle of the country, in a city that is so open and welcoming um, and shows, I, you know, I'm going to say it, but shows that true American hospitality um, yeah. that we can show to the rest of the world. And uh, I, I'm so glad that, you know, the the people of Omaha has supported, um, you know, from a government point of view, all the way down to the spectator point of view, that there's been so much support, open to avenues to show um, really what horse sports and the people that are interested in horse sports, um, because it is a fascinating side that these horses are so, so much of an incredible athlete. Um, and you get to show that up close and personal. That's the nice thing about these stadium views. You feel like you're sitting right next to it and like, yeah. you know, literally 15 feet away, this horse is jumping you know, five foot five. And I know. it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. You get, you get a visceral feel of it. So it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity, I think, to showcase uh, what horse sports are and why we are all so hooked in them um, and get, you know, get that across to um, not just the educated uh, spectators that will be there, but for the person that may have never seen it before. Um, and once you get them there for the first time, they're hooked. Yeah. I'm going to ask you something that actually is not on the uh, on our talking points is how do horses travel? I mean, what is it like for a horse to travel for for wherever it is to to an event like this? Because sure, you they're, have they're, to do something. I mean, it has to be kind of spectacular. They're flying. Yeah, they just, they just fly. Yeah. And uh, these horses, especially these elite athletes, of which these horses that you'll see over those four days, these elite athletes really can go all over the world. You know, and they do go all over the world to compete. Um, and I, you know, I've always said, like with my horses, I wish I had their frequent flyer miles, but they, um, they, they really do. And then it's not a very big stressful situation. Yeah. You get, you really, you know, you put them on what looks like a horse trailer and then you put that up a plane, plane goes up there and sits for, you know, seven hours, 10 hours and sits quiet. I think it's easier than driving down the road. Um, so the horses really one, get used to it. And two, really, it's a very, very a uh, low stress level for to ship these horses around the world. Yeah, and then they and then they come here. So how many horses will be in Omaha? Oh, I, you'll have between the two different disciplines, you're going to have, you know, 60 horses there. Yeah. No wow. So it, and and you know, and then as we said, the best uh, coming out of Europe, um the yeah. best that we have here in the United States uh, and Australians, uh they'll come up uh, or have probably been competing in Europe for a while. So um, you're going to see the best of the best that the world has to offer. Yeah, I, to me, that is that is so amazing. And I'm so looking forward to, yeah. to being there um, during right. the April 4th through 8th. Um, so another question is, what are you most looking forward to? Well, you know, I'm a horseman and I've been luckily enough to be able to be, uh, you know, in top competition for a long time. I'm retired now from that side, but... So the, you know, the amazing athletic uh, feats that these horses do, and obviously from a horseman's point of view, I'm always looking at further attitudes and their, and their thought process. And I always just, and I'm still, even now, you know, 40 years after being in the sport for so long, I'm still fascinated by horses and their thought process and how they go through it, because there's no way you can make a horse do what you're about to see here. You can't make them do it. They, they end up through their education over years and years and years and years, they get to the place where they love it so much um, that they are huge competitors and competitor partners. And so yeah. studying that from my point of view, I just I've watched that all day long, no matter what sport. I mean, lots of different sports. Yeah. So because that was a, that's a question just popped in my, my head. Do the do the horses know they're competing? I mean, do they know that there's an expectation of them? Um, but I but I all totally get that they they have to love what they do because it's beautiful what they do. Yeah. But do they, they know? absolutely 
They absolutely do love it. And I, they, horses, you all have horses absolutely rise to the occasion. I mean, they know that they're in the stand. They know, they feel the excitement of it. Yeah. Do they, you know, they're not, they're not a species that are thinking, okay, four days from now, I'm actually going to be in Omaha. They're not going to be like that. Right. They're going to be, yeah. when they get to Omaha and they are in the warm up, like, oh, this is the game. And they, you will have horses over and over and over and over just rise to another level um, of their competitiveness because of the environment that they're in. And they, they love to compete. I, I had several horses. One of my Olympic horses was that way all the time. When he rose into that uh, environment, suddenly the, this the, it was a whole nother level, just like a yeah. human in that way. I, so I think they totally get it. Yeah. And I and you just have to feel like the the energy of of everything that's surrounding them being in this in you know what they're going to be doing in Omaha, but also the the people in the stands and just that yeah, the energy they're yeah, they're totally embracing that. And really when you when you talk about that relationship between the you know obviously the human and the horse relationship, you know, so much of that preparation is kind of really kind of 70% human thinking about because they know where we need to be in three weeks or know where they need to be in six weeks yeah. or two years or four years where down the line. And so much of that very, very specific training, which has been built up over hundreds of years, um, is really from that side. And then on, so it's like 70, 30, right? And then on the day of competition, it almost switches itself, right? So that the- totally, I totally see, I can get, I totally- The get. rider guides and says here, and now the horse uses all of its half to be able to solve the puzzle. So you can see the relationship switches um as they get into competition oh my gosh that's so beautiful and that's just so amazing um that's it, 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 yeah i mean i've been in it for a long time and i'm still amazed <laughs> yeah and so yeah the amazement will probably will, will probably always be there um along with the excitement and um you know we talked a little bit about people that are new to the equestrian or unfamiliar with the sport um and this is just something that you have to experience um, you have to be there to experience the energy and the excitement. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it, it's amazing that human nature has changed so much, you know, just with technology and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And people become more, a little bit more and more distant from um, the relationship that we have with animals yeah. that we've had for thousands of years. Yep. And, you know, now in this modern day world, it's a little bit different. And so that, I think the visceral kind of emotional side tags in so quickly when somebody's around it again that they feel it. And like I said, once you get somebody there for the first time, they're usually hooked. They'll, they'll, they want to come back and watch more and more because there is that, you know, emotional connection that will never go away. Um, I don't believe um, just because we've been doing this for thousands and thousands of years of that relationship between these two, uh, between humans and horses. Yeah. And horses, I feel, um, I mean, the, I'm actually very connected to all kinds of animals, but, but, speaking just specifically to horses, there is, there is something very special about them. And also, um, yeah, like you said, they've been around for thousands of years. I mean, we've, we've had that connection with them and that yeah, with them. Yeah, I think there's a very kind of empirical uh, emotional connection that happens um, yeah. all the time. You watch it with kids, you watch it with uh, adults that haven't been around, you, you watch it in so many different environments of that connection and how quickly it happens and how willing the horses are to want to be able to have that connection. It's pretty stunning. Yeah. Horses are very much a healing animal as Absolutely. well. Um, that, you know, we could have a whole nother conversation yeah. about that. But um, again, I I just, I really appreciate you joining me today um, to have this conversation. Looking forward to the FEI World Cup finals happening April 4th through 8th. Um, any final words you wanna you want to give us? Oh, we're, look, we're looking forward to coming out and, and seeing. Yeah. Seeing it from every from a, from the what the city and how the city has got behind it to you know great competition. So I'm really excited for coming out and seeing it, uh, you know firsthand. Yeah. All right. Again, thank you so much, David. I look forward to seeing you um, when you get to Omaha. So, all right. Thank you. And folks, don't go away. We'll be right back.